board, you will not be able to solve this problem or us develop a solution unless we can first identify the cause of the problem. And there's been a lot of there's been a lot of hypotheses as to what the problems actually are. It was actually stated publicly in 2017 by one particular registrant that one of the major issues that we dealt with in the U.S., including Arkansas, was that we had Liberty products or glufosinate products that were contaminated with dicamba. The lot numbers that were accused to be contaminated, I was provided those by the Arkansas State Plant Board, and I had an opportunity to go and apply these lot numbers, these contaminated lot numbers, last fall. And I will tell you today, there was not a single soybean in those research plots that were told to be contaminated, the products contaminated, wasn't a so single soybean in those plots that exhibited an auxin symptom. So I don't think that actually contributed to anything that we saw. Actually, I've listed that as none of the, none of the complaints can be contributed to that, or that being the cause. It was mentioned today, or mentioned this year again by a registrant, that the belief was that roadside spraying as well as spraying of railroads largely contributed to the damage that we saw in 2018. I asked the board today, did we just start spraying oxen herbicides on railroads in 2017 and 2018? The answer to that is no. Folks, we've been spraying oxens on railroads and, rail and, and, and roadsides for probably close to 50 years, if not longer. I don't think that is a contributor to the major issues that we've observed. It's been noted home lawns, again, similar to railroads. We did not just begin spraying home lawns. And it's been noted that there's dicamba products in home lawns. I'll be the first to tell you that. Yes, very, very low co concentrations of dicamba products in home lawns. Does anyone have any idea how that rate that's applied to a home lawn actually compares to what you're putting across hundreds on hundreds of acres? It's a minute amount when we compare what's going in a lawn versus what we're putting out across these dicamba crops. Misidentification of symptoms. I've even had individuals say that I have no idea how to identify dicamba symptoms, and there may be some truth to that. But I'm hoping that's not the case. Folks, have symptoms been misidentified? Absolutely. I'll be the first to tell you that. But that is not the cause of us having over 1,000 complaints in 2017 and 200 complaints in 2018. Tank contamination. I think this is a minor contributor to the overall incidents that we're dealing with. Does it occur? Absolutely. Physical movement and drift. Every herbicide moves. In this label, it says the wind needs to be spraying 3 to 10 miles per hour. You will get movement. I think that's been a minor contributor to the overall damage that we've observed. So with that, what I'm going to call secondary movement, which is going to be water movement and dust, and you see up 1% total between those, I contend today, and I'm going to show you some evidence that I believe that it's the atmospheric loading of dicamba, especially in areas in which we've had heavy use of that herbicide, that has contributed to the landscape damage, and it's the function of volatility that we're ultimately dealing with. Now I want to take you back, and many of you have seen this before, some, some have not, but we conducted a research trial in combination with some registrants, and I apologize, but this is only, there's only six locations here. There was actually nine. I never had got access to the other uh, three sites. But at the end of the day, there were nine locations that looked at answering this question. Are the new formulations improved over older formulations? And really the older formulation or the oldest, the, the one that we all want, really wanted to compare to is Clarity. This is the, um, this is the DGA salt and it's the same as Extendamax, except Extendamax has additives to it called vapor grip to lower the volatility. And when we look over the six trials that I'm reporting here, the conclusion was we saw no difference in these trials in terms of the volatility of Clarity, BSF product Ingenia, and the Monsanto product at the time, Fair's product, Extendamax. 
Folks, there may be some difference there somewhere, but all I can tell you is in the six trials that we conducted in the field, these are field trials, we were unable to differentiate these formulations. So I'm going to conclude today as fact, the new formula formulations of dicamba are not improved over the older formulations, at least this formulation here, based on the tunnel work that has been conducted. That's what the evidence would indicate, the science would indicate. Now, I conducted some research at Kaiser in 2017 that also indicated that in terms of a large plot field trial. I'm not going to share that with you today. I'm going to move on to 2018. And on September the 20th, I did share this trial with you where we came in and we sprayed Extendamax, Roundup Pyramax 2, Warrant, and Intact. And this is a trial that was conducted in Proctor where 38.5 acres were sprayed in the center of a 240-acre field. These are extend soybeans. Now one thing I need to note, we waited for seven days in that field before we sprayed. Because folks, we were trying to achieve a labeled application of dicamba. And when it was all said and done, we sprayed with a wind speed of 2.8. Now some folks could say, well, you know, Dr. Northworthy, you're two-tenths of a mile per hour off of a, a legal application. And you'd be correct. I am two-tenths. That was the average wind speed there. But I'm also aware of the fact that there was other individuals that conducted this trial. Conducted this trial in Indiana. Good friend and colleague Brian Young. And Brian Young says the registrant came and helped him put the trial out. And they put the trial out at his location with a half a mile per hour wind. They didn't wait. They show up. They spray. They put the trial out because the focus of this trial really was to understand the potential for volatilization. So when this trial was going out, the first 15 minutes, the east-northeast side of this field was being sprayed and the wind was blowing from the northwest towards a southeast direction. So any deposit you would see, you would expect to be here on the east side of this field. The next 15 minutes, the west side of this field was sprayed. The wind was blowing almost directly out of the west. You would expect a herbicide drift or damage to be here on the east side of the field. The last 15 minutes, there's actually a ditch here, a canal, and the sprayer came around and sprayed the south part of this field, and the wind was blowing almost, almost due north. So you would expect the deposit, the physical drift, to be here on the treated area itself, the extend soybean. Now I came back and at 22 days after application, I walked around where we saw 5% damage around the periphery of where we saw 5%. I'll be the first to tell you there was damage beyond this white line you're seeing. But we walked, myself and, and a student walked around and we marked the 5% periphery of where 5% damage was. And what we found is we had 59.2 acres of soybean that was damaged at least to a 5% level from the off-target movement of dicamba. Is there something odd that you see about the damage or where that damage occurred within the field? Folks, if this was physical drift, where would the damage be? If this is physical drift and the wind is moving the herbicide, the wind was spraying from this direction, we would expect all of the damage here. But look at the damage. Damage here. Damage here. Damage here. Now some of this here, not all, but some of this I think is because water moved outside of this plot down the furrow. But the point is we sprayed 38.5 acres. We damaged 59.2 acres at least to the 5% level. And I'll tell you today, the new formulations can volatilize off a treated plot. Actually, we had air samplers in this field, and they can volatilize off of a treated plot for more than three days. We had air samplers here, air samplers in all these directions, and depending upon which direction the wind was moving, we detected dicamba. Now here is a photo of soybeans. And I'm going to set this up. One of these sides of the, the photo here was actually covered with a tarp. One of these was covered with a tarp during application. And the tarp was removed 30 minutes after application. Would you expect to see soybean 
having dicamba injury on it if it's covered during application and the tarp removed 30 minutes after application. No, you wouldn't expect that. This is the one that was not covered, and this is right beside it. I just sit here and drew a yellow line and a, and a white line. This is in the same field. 